yeah okay so here we are back again um, so we've taken all of our handwritten notes and we've formulated the schematic diagram here um, from all of the information that we've, uh, we've weaned from the uh, from the PCB itself we've looked at all the traces and we've looked at data sheets for the chips and we've managed to figure out what pin connects to what um, and from all those bits of paper <laughs> uh, we've put together an overall diagram here which is what we see here now um, the next step is to take this and convert it into a PCB okay we we'll want to make a PCB from this uh, which will be the end of the project really um, put it all together and hopefully build a brand new repeater card the first thing you need to do when you've put the circuit diagram together here is make sure all of the parts have been given reference numbers you'll notice up here for instance the, uh, the, the 2716 it has a reference here of U2 this capacitor over here has a reference of C6 uh, there's another capacitor over here that has a reference for C13 for example and so on and all of the parts actually have these reference numbers okay everywhere the 6502 it has a reference of U1 for example and so on everything's got part numbers these are, these are what they call references and it's just a sequential number so you can tell uh, the difference between the parts sequentially that's not the same as the value of the part which would be for instance 2716 would be the value of the part or this capacitor here is 100 nanofarad 100 nf so they're the values but these are the references and they're allocated to the circuit now as you can see they're already done here so there isn't really anything to do but if you did a brand new diagram just to show you the process you would use this tool up here uh, annotate and this annotates the, uh, the schematic which basically means give everything a reference number sequentially and the software does it for you automatically so if you click that and uh, I'll attempt to zoom in a bit um, you've got this uh, annotate schematic uh, window here when you click annotate it would take all of the unreferenced parts and give them a reference number so we'll do that right away and I'm not expecting to see anything happen because it's already done there so it says annotate complete had there have been any errors that the chips weren't allocated for whatever reason these would show up here uh, in the errors uh, or in the warnings display here now in our case there aren't any problems everything's correct so that's great and everything's been allocated uh, with a reference number so we can close that um, the next thing to do would be to um, check that there are no um, circuit violations um, so in other words everything is connected correctly you haven't got things like this where you have a chip uh, with non-connected pins you'll notice they've got little crosses on here and over there as well you must actually tell the software that these pins are meant to be non-connected uh, if you have a pin and you don't put that little X on to see if this is a non-connected pin it'll flash up as a violation it'll flash up as an error uh, and tell you uh, because it needs to know precisely what's meant to be connected and what's not meant to be connected so let's do a violation check let's see if there's any problems with that and if we go up here to I'll zoom in to inspect you'll see this uh, there's the electrical rules checker and this will basically do what we've just said it'll check that everything's connected and things that are not meant to be connected are indeed not connected so let's run that and I'll zoom out a bit yeah, and that's what this is going to do this is the electrical rule check uh, run ERC so let's click that you'll notice there's no violations uh, it checked uh, in the messages list it's checked the pins the labels the footprints everything's correct so we're good and if there was any problems it would show up here now common problems that you would have here would be things like I said earlier pins that are not connected that should be connected or pins that are not supposed to be connected you've got to tell it that you don't want them to be connected if you know what I mean so other things are you must have power supplies I'll just close that there you must have power supplies coming in if it's not like an actual physical battery in your circuit this is coming from a header 
from a connector. You must give it things like power flags. There's a power flag there, and there's a power flag there onto the ground pin. So one's for the positive VCC and the other one's for the ground. If you don't have that, it doesn't know that these are meant to be floating disconnected pins. Uh, you must put these in, otherwise it will flag up as a, as a violation, as an error. Uh, and you've got to tell it, no, it's been connected to an external 5 volt supply. You're aware of it. Things like that, so you get, those are common errors, and you have to just basically work, work your way through the, uh, the error list and, uh, and sort them out one at a time. And eventually, you end up with an error-free diagram. <laughs> it takes a bit of work, and if you're not familiar with uh, the, uh, the shortcut keys to get around it a bit faster and stuff like that. So it takes a little bit of effort to learn the package. So you've run through the annotate, everything is annotated. In other words, all the parts have got a reference. You've run the electrical rules checker and you've managed to iron out all of the problems. Everything's connected where it's supposed to be and all of that. And um, it comes up with clear. Now we're actually ready to dump all of this into our first PCB um, run, if you like. Give it a try. And this button up here, uh, which uh, conveniently does actually look like a little PCB, is the PCB designer so let's click that there you are so now we've got our PCB layout um, frame if you like it's it's just a blank sheet there's nothing here so what we need to do is import the the schematic into into this working environment which is going to design our PCB and we can use this button up here which says update PCB uh, changes to schematic this will import in all of our parts okay it also did a bit of a rule check as well while it was coming in to make sure that there wasn't any uh, problems but you'll see it says at the bottom here that it's error free and it's also warning free which is very nice indeed it's telling us uh, what it's done it's processing all of the parts and it's brought them all in don't forget we've already added footprints to the parts as well um, you can basically do that in the schematic if you like and you allocate the footprint size like what kind of chip it is is it a is it a is it a surface mount chip you know like a like a sop or is it a, a dual inline dil package and you basically tell it what footprints you want so we've already done all of that to save a lot of time so um you know that can be a bit time consuming you've basically got to go through all the parts and make sure everything's got the correct footprint uh, the size of the components that you intend to intent to have on your board and the uh, you know the shape of the part and everything and how many pins has it got so forth so that's all being done and you can see it's um, for instance this one here it says uh, U8 which is one of the chips and it's using footprint package DIP which is a DIP 14 so that's like a 14 pin package with long pads that's the uh, that's the size of the, uh, the the design of the the pad for the pins of the chip all right I need to do I needed to click update PCB I forgot to do that right let's do that <laughs> update PCB right thank you that's it now we can close that now what you notice is we get like a big chunk of it looks a bit weird uh, can I zoom in yes I can and you can see that we've actually got chips and um, if you like uh, layouts of components and everything it's certainly not a PCB uh, but it is all of the parts that's everything come from the schematic diagram and this is our starting point so at least now we've got all the parts with all the correct footprints and you'll notice these purple lines I'm just going to kind of zoom out and stick this somewhere hang on I'll put this up here somewhere out this out of place I'll just place that there okay now what you'll notice is there's all these like purple lines and white lines as well for instance you see those there connecting pin to pin now these are these are called rat lines um, they're not PCB tracks. They're not to be confused at, with copper on the board. These are, if you like, theoretical connections, or nets is the proper term. So, you know, this pin connects to that pin, blah de blah. That pin connects to that pin, and it's just showing us the theoretical connection. It's not a PCB track yet. Now, what you can do is probably the first thing you you would do is take those parts one at a time let's say the, um, the, the the processor this is the micro here uh, select it and then move it 
And you'll notice that the all of the um, hope you can see that all of the rat lines are actually being um, followed uh, as you as you drag the part. You know it it drags all of the lines with it. Looks kind of funny, <laughs> but it's keeping everything connected. So let's uh, let's go down and take that chip and drop it down onto our onto our sort of um, board here, roughly where we think it's going to be. Uh, let's do the next chip. Okay, let's stick him there somewhere, and let's do the next chip, and let's put him there. And you can probably get these a little bit closer and stuff, but that'll do. That'll do for the purpose of this. And then eventually you work your way through the whole thing, and place all of the components roughly where you think you're going to put them. There's a little bit of a there's a little bit of an art in sort of deciding where you want to put the parts on the board. Um, you can look at the rat lines, and if you start to move things around, let's say, what if I had it there? Yeah, that looks about the same amount of mess than having it there. So that it doesn't really have any advantage. You know, you can sort of, maybe there's even slightly less there, perhaps. But I'm going to leave it there. Um, you can, you know, you can move things around and you can see, well, is that easier? Well, that might be easier. Uh, that's a lot of wires. You know, but it it still needs to connect through to the to the process. You can see the the rat lines coming from from both directions. So really, it doesn't really make that much of a difference where you where you put the chips. And then you work through all of the parts. You know, you drag them all down and uh, decide. I'm just going to dump these in random places <laughs> without giving it too much thought. Okay. Well, there's our edge connector. It, uh, our uh, header, I should call it. It's not an edge connector, it's a header. And we'll put that somewhere sensible. Um, in, I don't know, let's put it somewhere on, on the edge of the board or something. And you work your way through positioning the parts, you know, roughly where you think they should be, uh, in a logical sort of uh, way. And uh, try to keep the uh, the distances short and, uh, and what have you keep an eye on all the rat lines and everything yeah now once you've done all of that um, you end up with components roughly in the position in the positions where you want them but it's still rat lines okay so it's we haven't done any actual PCB copper yet I'll dump all these down here somewhere <laughs> so um, you end up with a with a layout if you like of components where basically where you want them okay so what I've done is just to save a bit of time um, that took me about 20 minutes something like that I've placed all of the components uh, pretty much where I want them there are bits of space here you know you'll notice I haven't really cramped everything in as uh, as best as possible I can make some adjustments and just sort of like move things around a little bit maybe so I'll shift up uh, this chip here a bit closer maybe and uh, you know move move things around a little bit you can do some fine adjustments uh, maybe this little bunch of components here uh, we can like shift that a little bit maybe in and all we're really doing is just trying to you know reduce some of the gaps a bit you, you don't want it too condensed because then uh, you'll never be able to get all the tracks in unless you go for a multi-layer board or something this will just be a standard two-layer board copper on the top copper on the bottom but um, I've got everything roughly where I want it this is the 6502 here and then you've got the 2716 here and the 6116 RAM here this is our uh, port chips you know the uh, the in and out ports this is our uh, header connector which will connect to the other board which will connect to the analog board and power various resistors and capacitors for the um, the logic uh, the no and the or logic this is our decoder chip um, for the page decoding uh, you know you can just like move things around a bit better this chip here you can press R for rotate I'm just going to press R and uh, Maybe maybe that will fit better in there. I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah, not really. I think it was all right where it was. 
this diode can move up here. Yeah, maybe I can squeeze that in there. Yeah, that's a bit better. Now it's got rid of a bit of the gap there. Uh, shift that over to there, maybe. Yeah, so you know you can squeeze things in a bit, try and make the uh, the footprint um, of the of the whole board, the outline of the board, you know, a bit more compact. I've still got some dead space here and there, and uh, what have you. We can put some text on the board. Text. And we can say G0 or BZY, for instance, uh, repeater. Uh, this is version 2 now. Let's have a look. Uh, repeater version 2. And we can say C. Uh, let's see, uh, 2022, something like that. That'll do for now. And you'll notice it's going to put it on this layer here. We've got a layer selector here. And um, this will um, this will select which uh, which layer we want. So we we'll want to put this on the top layer. Okay, so we'll click OK to that. And we'll stick that up here somewhere. Uh, where are we? Zoom back out again. Let's stick got a nice little gap here, so let's stick it in there maybe. Yeah, okay, that's done. So we've got a little we've got a little uh, bit of text in there. And that'll actually uh, that'll actually be on the copper layer. What you could do is probably better would be to put it on the silk screen layer. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll change that layer. Instead of so instead of it just being like copper tracks that makes that, we'll put it on the uh, the front silk screen, which is uh here, F there's back silk, silk screen and there's front silk screen. Let's do that. Yeah, that's better. So now it's actually on the um, it's on the silk screen instead of it being on a copper. Now um, you might want to put that label on the other side of the board. So let's uh, let's do another text. Uh, in fact, I can just copy that, can't I? Just select that and do Control C, and then. We can, uh, we can do another one, except this one, we want it on the back uh, silk screen, and we want to mirror it, because if you think about it, the whole thing's back to front, we're looking at the top of the board, when you flip the board over, it'll also flip the text, so it needs to be mirrored, so now that looks mirrored, and you can actually overlap these, be it looks a bit of a mess, I know, I'll try and spring them out a bit, there you go. So. This one is on the top layer silk, and this one, mirrored, is on the bottom. So when you flip the board over, it'll look correct. And there you go. So that's a bit of text in there. Let's see of what we're doing. And what we do need to do now is look at the border. Um, we need to do a cutout layer. So that's uh, over here. And we need uh, edge cutouts, which is this one here. Draw. I think it's uh, that gives us uh, an area. This one gives us a yeah. That's right. So let's try and see if we can cut this close to the to the board edges. And all I'm doing is just like defining the outer edge of where the board will be, ish. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like uh, something like that. And then take it to the to the origin. There you go. Right. I'll we'll just uh, get that to fit. Right. That's our cut out edge. Uh, and that's basically uh, if we turn that layer off. Yeah. That's the cut out edge. So that's that's now correct. So we'll save that. And we need that because um, when the board goes to the fabricator, um, they chop these or they can chop these to the any size you want. You can even do shaped. I think some fabrication houses will do shaped bars. Uh, as long as you define it here, this is basically the outside of the board shape. Now I've got a bit of gap under here. Um, it's not particularly dense. If you sat with this for a bit longer, you could probably cram the components in a bit closer and reduce the uh, the footprint size of the actual board. But that'll do for now. Okay, and that's it. That's saved. Okay. Now there's two ways we could proceed here. Um, remember these are rat lines that we're looking at here. The, all these white lines these are not copper yet they're not tracks and we want to turn them into copper so there's two ways to do it you can do it manually uh, there's nothing wrong with that you can uh, lay out the board yourself 
and just use your own judgment and to be honest if you're skillful enough if you've done this a few times it's not that difficult to do let's have a look at that let's try this track here um, which is the link between the the pull-up resistor and the uh, and the capacitor this uh, this rat line here it's telling us that these need to be connected now it's just drawn a straight line it's not PCB layout or anything so we need to turn this into a pad now to do it manually we we'll select root up here um, I'll try and zoom in a bit select root up here and do root single track okay and you can select the width of the track here and I've got some predefined sizes that I tend to use so let's go for like 0.3 of a millimeter that's fairly thin and you can go from the start of the track to the end of the track and you'll notice before I click the end it kind of roots for you um, it, it as you move around it sort of puts in for you know 45 degree bends and stuff if you wish I'm okay with that so let's just click that and there you go so we've done our first track and that's a 0.3 millimeter um, copper track you'll notice it's in red which means it's on the top layer and this is the layer that we're, that we're actually operating with um, I do believe we can probably select that and change it to say the like the bottom layer which is the blue layer and that puts the connection on the bottom uh, on that one as well of course I forgot about that bit so let's do put that on the, on the bottom as well so now what we've got is a blue track uh, which is the uh, which is the bottom layer so you can either put the track on the top copper or you can put it on the bottom copper and so on here's a one here well actually I'm going to put that back onto red so I'm just going to undo what I did there there you are, put it back onto red that's now the top layer copper here's another one here X which starts the route line starts the track there you go sorry and we can go to there uh, now that's going to violate you see it's actually going over the uh, to the uh, to the ground pin but I think that's probably close enough yeah it's not given as a violation or anything so that's connected the um, the positive of the pull-up resistor to uh, one of the positive pins which is pin 2 um, well it's actually uh, that's actually the ready pin but it's it's all connected together it's telling us it's it's net VCC which is correct but they're actually connected to other pins there's another one over there you see VCC here as well and these are just basically uh, connected together so let's do that connection so let's try and let's try and do that one. So let's uh, select pin that one there, and then go here. Now we can either go down, uh, or you can you can stop it halfway through and do a zigzag like that. So there you go, and you connect those. Uh, if you wanted a a different track width, we could say, oh, I want a thicker one. Let's try let's try 0.6 of a millimeter because it's a power rail. Um, so kind of want to do it that way instead okay so you can change the sizes of the uh, of the tracks you can these are predefined you just type them in the, the lengths the uh, the width that you would like and so on and that's how you would manually build up converting from the from the rat line um, to the actual copper track and you can do the entire board that way nothing wrong with that it takes a while and uh, you've got to be a bit careful about things like you know how thick you want the tracks and that sort of thing and make sure things don't get too close like this one's slightly suspect that's a bit close so you know you might want to maybe delete that segment and then root again uh, from the, from there and you can go down and maybe it's just go straight in uh, if I can do that <laughs> you know what I'm still learning this software and uh, there you go there so that's much better now we're not too close to this uh, to this ground pad here up the top yeah, that's a lot better and we can save our work there save as you go so and so on um, obviously that takes time you end up going through the whole thing uh, power supply rails you tend to make thicker um, you know have a because it's going to supply more current so you tend to uh, 
the signal lines can be as thin as you like really but the, the the power it's best to give it a little bit of thickness maybe it's like 0.6 of a millimeter track or 0.8 of a millimeter track something like that and where the power comes in here you probably want it to be quite thick uh, because that's handling all of the power for for all of the chips so yeah that's all coming together now that's one way of doing it that's the manual way however there is another way to do all this and I'm going to show you that next and this is going to be using auto routing which takes care of all of the connections for us and turns everything into copper and we'll look at that next <laughs>